Hi everyone, this is Brandon. Thank you for joining me for another skincare vlog. I hope you're doing well. If you don't know who I am, my name is Brandon. I am a medical writer. I've written over a thousand medical articles, all of which you can find freely on the web, most of which have been focused in dermatology and skincare research, and I'll leave a link down below so you can check those out. But today I want to talk to you about a powerful anti-aging ingredient that I think everyone should be including in their skincare regimen, regardless of your age or where you are at in your, in your anti-aging journey. And that is a retinoid, more specifically, adapalene. But before I begin, please hit the like button down below. It really helps my video reach more people and grow my channel, and I really, really appreciate it. And definitely hit that subscribe button down below. Hit that notification bell so you can be alerted for new and future videos. I have skincare videos coming out every other day, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, as well as a weekend vlog on Sunday. I'd love to have you here. I'd love you to join in this skincare research community. I learn a lot from subscribers and people who interact with my videos, so definitely stick around. I'd love for you to join in and contribute. So Adapalene, this is the Adapalene tube that I have that I got from CVS. It is a third generation synthetic retinoid that was approved in the United States by the FDA in 1996 for the treatment of acne in people 12 years and older. Any synthetic vitamin A derivative like adapalene, which is over the counter, or tretinoin or tazeratine, these are three, the most widely three used retinoids. I don't know if I said that right, but the most widely used retinoids um, for acne that hold extremely high efficacy for reducing acne lesions and overall, overall improvement of skin hydration and improvement in hyperpigmentation. But even though this these retinoids have been approved for acne, adapalene, tretinoin, and to a certain extent, tazeratine are often used off-label for other indications like skin aging, reversing the signs of photo damage, as well as improving fine lines and wrinkles by improving the synthesis of collagen in the skin. Retinoids like adapalene and tretinoin have anti-inflammatory properties. In regard to anti-aging, a lot of the aging process is driven not only by oxidation and sun damage, well, oxidation is caused by the sun damage, but also inflammation. Inflammation drives a lot of the age-related disorders as well as the visible signs of aging. So having a topical agent that has anti-inflammatory capabilities and compounds in it is incredibly powerful. So yeah, even though topical retinoids are approved for, for in the first line setting for acne, the research shows that retinoids, even adapalene, even though it's fairly new in terms of the the approval from the FDA has anti-aging benefits that can be used off-label or is used off-label, I have to get my wording right, but is used off-label for anti-aging purposes. And despite the varying perceptions between tretinoin and adapalene in terms of their efficacy and even tazeratine, stud recent clinical studies have shown that adapalene has comparable efficacy to tretinoin, at least tretinoin, in terms of not only anti-aging, but also acne. But adapalene, because it's over the counter and slower concentration, and it's newer in terms of its development and approval, it has fewer associated side effects compared with tretinoin. Tretinoin, a lot of retinoids can really dry out the skin and cause purging or skin redness, as well as increase incidence of bumps, and it can make acne appear like it's getting worse before it gets better. But adapalene is better tolerated than tretinoin, better than tazeratine. I think the clinical perceptions is that tazeratine is the, the most effective agent, the most effective synthetic or uh, retinoid on the market, prescription retinoid for acne, but it's also the least tolerated. Whereas tretinoin is also effective, but is a little bit the, the side effects are a little bit more mild and moderate, whereas adapalene is, has comparable efficacy to tretinoin, but fewer side effects and an overall better tolerability profile. So in terms of anti-aging benefits, the thing about adapalene is it's an over-the-counter synthetic third-generation retinoid, but because it was approved later than tretinoin, we have more efficacy and safety data on tretinoin, as well as more data in terms of the anti-aging benefits for tretinoin than we do adapalene. But recent research, as well as some research from the early 2000s, showed that adapalene is also comparable in efficacy in terms of anti-aging, in terms of improving collagen synthesis in the skin, as well as reducing fine lines and wrinkles around the eyes, around the mouth, 
um, the forehead lines, and just improving overall skin tone and texture and, and smoothness, as well as reducing melasma and hyperpigmentation. Hyperpigmentation is another, another age-related sign, but it's also induced by by blue light and sunlight and UV. One study from 2018 published in the European Journal of Dermatology compared the, the efficacy of adapalene 0.3% gel with tretinoin 0.05% cream for cutaneous photoaging. So basically just skin aging caused by UV damage. And the study, participants in the study were followed up for about 24 weeks, I think. So it's a relatively short follow-up, but overall the randomized study showed that adapalene had comparable efficacy. It was not inferior to tretinoin in terms of reducing periorbital wrinkles, so the, the, the lines and the wrinkles around the eyes, as well as the lines and wrinkles around the mouth and the forehead lines. And it also had the same safety profile to tretinoin. So safety and tolerability are two separate things. Safety is basically, you know, is it safe to take? Is it going to increase the risk of other things? Whereas tolerability is more so in line with dryness or peeling or irritation, things like that. So adapalene also goes by the trade name or brand name different, and you'll probably see that, you've probably heard about that on other, other people's vlogs here on YouTube, or you've probably seen that in the drugstore when you're looking for an over-the-counter adapalene. I got this at CVS, so it's just the store brand, but it's the same, it's the same concentration and the same efficacy. And in another study in the Germ Journal of Dermatologic Treatment in 2012, researchers looked at the clinical efficacy of adapalene or differin 0.3% gel in women with cutaneous photoaging, and they also found improvements in forehead wrinkles, periorbital wrinkles, so the the lines in the around the mouth, as well as the lines around the eyes, the periorbital wrinkles, and these were statistically significant. There's also improvement in melanin and transepidermal water loss and hydration were also improved, and there were reductions in the number of wrinkles. All of this, again, was statistically significant. And this was also a relatively short follow-up period. I think it was a six-month open-label trial, and I don't think there was a control group or a a comparator group, like a, an active comparator group with tretinoin or anything like that. So it's best to make sure that you are taking those limitations into account. But considering this research, as well as all the other studies we have on adapalene and its benefits for anti-aging, it's safe to say that this can help to really improve, overall improve the robustness, that's my favorite word, I think, of your anti-aging regimen. Okay, so how do you use adapalene? How do you use differin, adapalene, etc.? Basically, it's gonna follow the same rules for any retinoid that you use or, you know, tretinoin, tazeratine. You want to apply this to a clean, dry face, Clean your skin, preferably at night, because ret retinoids tend to be le not very stable in the in the presence of light or UV. Adapalene is more stable. It's a more stable molecule compared to adapalene is more stable compared with things like tretinoin and tazeratine. It's more stable in response to light and UV, but you still have that risk of degradation. So, ideally, you want to do this once a day at night, right before you go to bed. Clean your face, make sure your face is clean and dry. If your face is damp, it's going to just increase the, the penetration of the ingredient into your skin. That's going to really raise your risk of irritation, redness, extreme dryness. So you want to make sure that you're applying this to dry skin. Make sure that the whole skin is dry on your face. And you want to take a pea size amount on your skin. I'll just, I'll, I'll go ahead and show you what it looks like. But a pea size amount that I apply is about, I mean, it's a pea, so, uh, yeah, this is probably not the best. So, it's about, about this much. It's kind of like melting in my hand because I have the oven going at like 450 right now, so it's getting hot in here. So you apply a pea size amount across your entire face. Make sure that you are minimizing the exposure around your, around your under eyes because the skin under your eyes are, is extremely thin and it's more prone to irritation, so make, bring care that you're not putting this underneath your eyes or directly underneath your eyes. But applying it all across your face, your forehead, around, around here, like getting a little bit below your eyes, your nose, your chin, your cheeks, that should be enough coverage for the night. And then you wanna apply a fragrance-free moisturizer over it. Let it dry down first, just make, make sure that it just settles down, dries down, and then come over with a fragrance-free gentle moisturizer. I highly recommend right now anyway, the Vanny Cream Daily Facial Moisturizer. This is a drugstore fragrance-free moisturizer. It's free of any fragrances, parabens, any irrit irritants at all. So and it has 
hyaluronic acid and ceramides in it. It's very soothing, great for sensitive skin. I highly recommend putting that over a, a an, an adapalene or any sort of retinoid that you're using. And when you wake up in the morning, make sure that you are putting on a sunscreen, adapalene, tretinoin, tazeratine, all of these retinoids are gonna make your skin more susceptible to the sun and UV, which can paradoxically increase your skin aging risk. So you wanna make sure that you be, you're being very diligent in your sunscreen and protective clothing, et cetera, et cetera. So adverse effects that any any person may experience with retinoids, even adapalene, could be burning, photosensitivity, irritation like drying, um, redness, itchiness, or pruritus. Um, these these are especially common if you aren't using a moisturizer over it. I personally, to reduce irritation, I put a moisturizer on after I cleanse my face. I let it dry down within like an hour or so, dry down completely, and then I will put the adapalene over the moisturizer. That will really help to improve the, the the tolerability, reduce any irritation. I haven't had any any problems with it at all using this method. And then once that dries down, I apply a thin layer of moisturizer over it again, just to really lock in and seal in the moisture and reduce any dryness. Studies have shown that that doesn't really impact the efficacy of the of, of adapalene specifically, and it will really improve the overall tolerability and your ability to stick with the product over time. But yeah, any any adverse events are generally mild in severity, at least with the clinical studies that we have now and the case reports that we have, they're, they're generally mild. People who are pregnant or breastfeeding are advised to not use synthetic retinoids or retinoids like adapalene, tazeratine, or tretinoin, definitely speak with your dermatologist, your, your healthcare provider about these drugs or about these topical products. Definitely speak to your healthcare provider, your clinical dermatologist about these if you are pregnant and breastfeeding. You definitely wanna make sure that you have a board certified healthcare practitioner guiding you along your journey. But yeah, overall, I really like adapalene. I, I think maybe after I'm done using Adapalene for at least this tube or maybe a few tubes later down the road, I may switch to a prescription grade like a tretinoin. I definitely have to go to my dermatologist to get that, but I really like the overall anti-aging benefits that have been reported in the literature. I think that it's extremely promising. I've heard only good things about tretinoin, about adapalene, I think, or just retinoids in general. I think that they are incredibly powerful. It's just one ingredient but it is a simple ingredient that you can use in your anti-aging regimen, one that I highly recommend. But let me know down below in the comments if you use this, if you use adapalene or tretinoin, do you, have you noticed any difference in your skin over time, especially if you've used it long-term? Leave me a comment down below. I'm definitely really interested to hear how you, or what experience you've had with using these ingredients, with using synthetic retinoids. I've been using this consistently for about a couple of months now, so I'm fairly new to it, but I have noticed a difference in just sort of smooth, sm more smooth skin, smoother texture, overall more even skin tone that I really, really appreciate with this. But yeah, leave me a comment down below and let me know if you've used this. I'm definitely interested in hearing your experience. And if you like this video, please hit the like button. I'd love to have you here for future videos. Hit the subscribe button as well. Share this video with your friends if you found it helpful or enlightening in any way. And I'm gonna go now. I think the oven is calling my name. It is the Super Bowl tonight. I don't watch sports, but um, I'm helping to cook and make things tonight. But I'm gonna go and attend to the Blue Apron meal, maybe bake some cookies or, cu or cupcakes or something like that. And I will see you in the next vlog. Bye.